Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. Today's video looks at something slightly different and that is the issue of hexing, baneful magic and cursing. And I want to share with you a couple of stories about people who have done some hexing or baneful magic and the consequences that they didn't see coming and why. So today's video is hexing in witchcraft. So first of all, what is a hex? So a hex is of course a spell that is harmful to another person. It can be physically harmful, it can be mentally harmful, it can be psychically harmful. It is just not something that they would wish. My own ethical witchcraft states that I would never hurt someone knowingly. I'm a bit like a doctor and their ethical practice is do no harm. And I sort of subscribe to that. I don't want to do any harm. Besides the fact that if I use my craft to hex somebody, I might as well go out onto the street and punch them. And if I am not willing to go out and punch someone, then I definitely shouldn't go around and hex them because it can be the same thing. So that's my ethical code. I did ask my supporters and followers what their ideas of ethical witchcraft was. And here are some of the examples that I got, which I thought I would share with you because they're all extremely valid. Sophie Britton says, I strongly advocate for defence first. Likewise, Solaris Blue Raven states, I am a true believer in psychic self-defence. However, this might not be for you, and as British folk magic commented, I think every witch is different. They're absolutely right. Of course we are. We're all different. Daughter of the Black Madonna thought that ethical witchcraft was not interfering in another's free will. And likewise, Reaver's holistic therapies said not bending others' will. All of this is about how you impact on your fellows. You can impact for good and you can impact for bad, but whether either of those are the correct thing to do. Let's start with hexing, baneful magic, which is violent magic, uh, cursing, and generally sending out bad things to get you. And I want to start this with a quick story. A long-term subscriber to mine, who we'll call Penny, had a situation where she wanted to hex another woman to experience the pain that that woman had caused her. So she created the hex and she did this in her own home and she did it without any true knowledge of what she was actually doing. She sent the hex out and 10 minutes later, she was standing in her kitchen, you know, pottering about as you do, and she was literally banged into with force and knocked over. She became completely dizzy and could not move for a good 10 minutes. And I think what had happened to Penny is that as she'd done the hex, she'd called in a negative entity, a demonic entity, bad juju, call it what you will. And when she'd called in this bad juju, there are after effects and you don't know what they are. Hers was obviously it either rebounded off the person she sent the hex to and the demon creature came back and attacked her, or it was that she was using dark forces. And when you call dark forces to you, they turn up. It's very simple. Speak of the devil and the devil appears. If you call the devil, you will get the devil. It might not be the Satan of Christian mythology. However, it will be something that you really don't want around you. Another of my Patreon supporters, let's call them Tom. Hi, Tom. Not his real name. He was using dark magic to bring great wealth, which is, you know, pretty easy to do if you want to go that route and you will get a lot of wealth. His situation turned into that his material wealth was bought to him by, you've guessed it, a demon. And this demon, having taken note of Tom and thought, oh yes, he's a very nice psychic person, I can get a good feed off this one, stayed. Tom therefore became unutterably and seriously depressed. 
to the point where he was uh, had a death plan and was about to take his own life. There was a lot of suicide got going on in his home. He came to me and said, I think I've got an entity on me. And so I took this entity off. And with that, his depression was able to start getting better. It took him many months of work, but at least he could get better. Because what that demon had done is to sit on him and bring him to the point of self-destruction. And there's a reason for that. If you self-destruct because you're pushed over the edge, which is often the case by a demon, then they're sitting there waiting to literally take you to hell. And that's the problem with hexing. If you call devils and demons to you, you might not even feel the effects of their presence around you. However, you are then marked by them. And it's not what happens in this life. We've got enough trials and tribulations in this life without calling in devils to help us on our way. It's what happens when you die. There is a time between when you, your soul has left its body and before it has passed on to the world of spirit where you are at risk. And your risk is greater if you have dabbled with demons all your life because they'll know that you're there and they'll be waiting. And let me tell you, you don't want to suffer what they have got in mind for you. If you've ever seen the horror flick, Drag Me to Hell, that's a pretty good analogy of what is going to happen to you. It's pretty bad. We are not supposed to go to hell, no matter what we've done in this life. One of the reasons why you should behave with great courtesy and kindness and love towards your fellow human beings is so that you can grow in this life and become a better person so that you will get more joy and more happiness. There is a benefit to being kind and good and decent. You get your own reward. When you die, you will also have a greater protection from being dragged out of this plane of existence and away from the world of spirit to somewhere you don't want to go. I think this is where the rule of seven comes in. Whatever you do and send out, you will be returned seven times. Now, that's a very straightforward rule to have. If you send out a hex, what you'll get back is probably not a hex. You'll probably get back a demon. And that's seven times far worse than any hex that you can send. So these are the risks that you face if you carry on with hexing your fellow humans. Yeah. And to be honest, and as a demonologist, I don't like the odds. I really don't. What do you think? How do you live your life as a witch? And do you agree with what I have said? These are fairly deep points, aren't they? But I do want to talk about them because it is a part of the issue of consent and I'm quite hot on consent myself. Let me know in the comments below. There is also a debate going on on my Instagram page. So do look at that and add your comments there if you'd like. Or you can go to www.patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill and check out the debates going on on that platform. And if you want some one-to-ones, there is a, the ability to sign up and see me personally. Otherwise, please just like and subscribe because it really helps my channel. And I love you all for subscribing. And I will see you in a few days. <laughs>